Hello, everybody. I'm David Eicholtz. I'm with David Richard Gallery here in New York City. And with me today is Michael Dixon. And uh, this is a new exhibition uh, that, of Michael's work. It's recent and current work that uh, he had started actually here in New York uh, in 2015 at the uh, Sharps Valentis uh, Foundation uh, during a fellowship. And, um, and he teaches, he's a full professor at Albion College in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he came back in for this exhibition and what we'd like to do is have Michael uh, discuss the paintings, uh, some of the different elements in the paintings, um, some of the different titles, and the whole body of work. Um, and we won't go through all of the paintings, but enough of them for you to get a feel. They're all on the website, and, uh, and there'll be an online catalog as well um, for you to use as a reference. Uh, the title of the exhibition is I Too Sing America, which is the first stanza of a, a um, of a poem by Langston Hughes called I Too. Mm -hmm. And so I think you'll touch on that as we sure. go around. Um, there's a couple of these where it really speaks uh, very specifically to that, um, to what's in that poem. So what I'd like to do is have you start with this particular painting. Um, this figure uh, is a recurring theme uh, through a lot of the paintings. Um, and the title of this one, I'm sorry everybody for having to pull this out, but just want to make sure we have it correct. Uh, the title is, We Have Not Ended Racial Caste in America. We Have Merely Redesigned It. Mm -hmm. So uh, why don't you go ahead and talk about this particular element, mm -hmm. what it means to you and into the, in this body of work. Sure. Thank you, David. Oh, you're welcome. So this whole, uh, this whole body of work uh, is titled, The More Things Change, The More They Stay the Same. And these paintings, as you said, I started at the Sharp. I was kind of into them at the, the Sharp Walenta Studio Program here in New York. I was here for a year, 2015 to 2016. And during that time, and I actually started that residency not really knowing what I was, I had already made a few paintings, wasn't sure what I was gonna paint. Um, and it was right, you know, there was these shootings that were happening uh, against unarmed black men, women, and children. And mm -hmm. it seems like every week there was a shooting that happened. Um, uh, police officers, white, often white police officers were not being charged, they were getting off. And, and it was right around that time that Tamir Rice, you know, uh, had gotten shot. He was a 14 year old child and it just was really weighing on me heavily. And I was also reading some, some things from, from black political thought. It was, uh, it was from a, a directed study I had done with a student of mine, African-American student of mine, and we had put together all these readings. And so within those readings were, were, were um, lots of speeches that were given by W. Du Bois, Frederick Douglass, Malcolm X, uh, MLK, Marcus Garvey. And so it was these black leaders from 50 years, 60 years ago, 100 years ago. And it struck me that uh, the speeches they were given, uh, were giving a hundred years ago, were, resonated with me right now, and and so, um, and so I, I started making these paintings, and so this is uh, this is this little sambo doll that I had ordered online, and for me, you know, what I was thinking about as I was painting these was I was thinking about black bodies and the value of black bodies and mm -hmm. and for me this doll is it's a child it's a ch kind of a child shaped doll it and if you were to see the doll in person it's uh it's kind of worn and old and it kind of falls apart and it's broken and and so this doll it's it's a it's a racist image of a of a black person um and for me what was happening to black bodies in the news weekly, um, which which I think we all know is is not even though it was being um, discussed in the news frequently, is something that has always been happening to black bodies and black spaces. Um, is is the and so I was, I was curious about the worth of a black body and um, and and the worth of of black bodies in America historically and and today, um, the worth of of black children, mm -hmm. black males. Um, and so 
I'm, I'm half black and half white. My, my biological father is African American. And so a lot of my work deals with race and identity. Mm -hmm. and, and so for me, this doll symbolizes how blackness is viewed in America. And even though it's this kind of old trope of the Sambo, of the kind of the happy, smiling Negro, and no matter what you do to it, it is always smiling. Um, you know, I think when you, when, when black bodies are able to be objectified and turned into objects, then violence is, is people can do violence to those bodies easily. So for me, this, this is the black body in America. And, and what is attractive to me about it is that is the smiling face. Um, and, and, and I guess I say attractive because I am, I'm, I am both attracted to it and repulsed by it. And so I find it to be uh, a, an image that, that I, I want to paint and I, I want to look at, but then it, at the same time, it's something that I find viscerally disgusting and hard to look at. And so, you know, I think, I hope that those kind of, those elements of, of disgust and attraction, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like to have those opposites colliding in my work, and I think, I think narrative. You can find narrative in those spaces where things collide that don't belong together, and so you have this beautiful kind of soothing blue background with this kind of disgusting imagery of a black person historically. Um, yet the the image is smiling at the viewer and so there's these kind of these two things colliding that shouldn't be there so and the, the sambo doll actually references back though to, to slavery as well correct yeah and, and yeah. then obviously into the jim crow era yeah. and so a lot of your imagery um references back about almost 150 or more years yeah of sort of um this sort of prejudice and, and treating as, as other mm -hmm. um, the black communities as a whole. Right. Okay. So we're standing in front of uh, this painting here, which is titled White Liberal. And your titles are very specific. Mm -hmm. um, they're not, usually, this one's probably the shortest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they, uh, they, they definitely lead the viewer um, there's no ambiguity sort of in terms of where you want to go. But this one there sort of is because mm -hmm. there's several things operating here. Mm -hmm. um, the Sambo doll reappears. Um, but you're wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we should point out in this body of work um, is other than the first painting that we talked about, virtually all of the others um, are self-portraiture. Right. So they're, you is really the primary figure. Mm -hmm. And you're coming in and out of... Um, the uh, picture either from a corner or from below or sides or whatever um, and you're never cent centrally located mm -hmm. um, in in the painting so at some point you might want to touch on that as well but uh wanted you to talk about the mass and the mm -hmm. significance of the mass because that sort of has reappeared i mean has appeared sort of later in this series mm -hmm. and um is a recurring theme with a lot of different mass mm -hmm. and sort of what you also mean then by white liberal yeah yeah, and so, and we were talking earlier, you know, I think, I, I don't think any of my paintings, uh, I don't have any answers. It's really me, there's a, there's a, it's me thinking about things. And I'm oftentimes, um, you know, I'm reading and thinking and then I'm painting and there's an element of play in my work. And so a lot of times I'm, I'm just kind of playing to see what happens. I think for me, in this particular image, in this idea of white liberal uh, as a, maybe an indictment or not, um, you know, there's, a, there's an author, his name is Tim Wise. He's a, uh, a white man and he does a lot of anti-racism work. And there's, um, in my teaching, I do some anti-racism work in my teaching. And so he, Tim Wise has this, this lecture that he, he's talking about, um, about racism and some of these things. And he, and, and he talks about how, uh, you know, nice white liberals, you know, service providers, they just want to help. And, um, and so I think it's, it's thinking about how um, racism is such, uh, it's so embedded in our culture 
uh, systemically and institutionally. And oftentimes we have uh, people who, who have privilege uh, that want to help, um, yet they go, you know, they go back to their all white neighborhoods or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and so I was, kind of, I was kind of in that Tim Wise mode when I was making this image or thinking about this image. And, and the mask, you know, I think the mask is, uh, masks are indicative of, of the masks we wear, right? We kind of, and especially as someone who's, who's biracial and light-skinned, you know, I kind of, in perpetually, I have my foot in, in multiple worlds, mm -hmm. um, and I'm constantly putting on different masks to fit in or not fit in. And, um, and so I think the masks kind of speak to the masks we wear to fit in or to enter worlds mm -hmm. or blend in. Um, and so I think when we think about, uh, when, I, when I'm thinking about this idea of a white liberal, you know, and, and, and this idea of racism being something um, that you have to kind of work at and be actively, you know, participating in anti-racism work. Mm -hmm. And uh, people aren't, you know, people are not racist just because they have a black friend who's their, a black friend or they, you know, they help out here and there. But, uh, you know, anti-racism is something you, you, it's a way of life and it's something you have to actively be engaging in all the time. And so this is kind of this, you know, white liberal who's helping, you know, yet the black, the black body is still this kind of racialized um, kind of stereotype. And so it's, uh, it's just, and again, this is, this is funny to me. <laughs> so uh, there's, for me, it's a little bit of a humor. It's, it's ironic. It's the person trying to help, trying to comfort, yet the system remains and the system stays in place is kind of how I interpret this painting. So. But it, just so, just curious. Yeah. Um, so, if um, if the politics in the country hadn't mm -hmm. gone sort of the way they had in mm -hmm. the last two years, do you think this um, imagery would have been as um, what I'm looking for? As sort of in your face and, and overt in your work, or do you think sort of? Um, Feeling like we've sort of re-entered 1964 all over yeah. again, or 1963. Yeah. Uh, do you think, you know, if you look back two years ago or so, when you were had just finished the the uh, mm. fellowship, yeah, you know, because uh, most of that work back then, I'm just looking at some of the pieces down the corridor here uh, from 2015, mm -hmm. and they really were just sort of more just you mm -hmm. and a, and sort of a leading title. Yeah. And then I noticed later. Um, there's these, um, the figure and other dolls uh, come into play. Yeah. I, you know, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I think when we start talking about racism, um, we have to agree on what we're talking about. And uh, for me, racism is a system of oppression based on race, mm -hmm. the key word being a system. And so it's, it's systemic. Mm -hmm. And it's cultural and it's institutional and it's individualized. And so uh, oftentimes when people do work, you know, people can do work on themselves um, quite easily, um, but to change an institution or to change a culture uh, is, is harder work. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is that American culture is racist um, and it's systemic. And so that's a much bigger, issue than just the couple of years we've had uh, with politics. Mm -hmm. I think it goes back further than that and it's deeper and it's more, uh, it's, it's um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's harder to get rid of. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, it, and, it's, and so, so for me, I think this image would still resonate even if we had Hillary Clinton as our president, even though it'd be a much better place. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> so if you think about your work, though, in a trajectory of sort of a bigger au revoir, so yeah. like you, you're a system, yeah. or part of a system. Mm -hmm. So do you then see this as sort of a defining moment right now to sort of set the stage to um, sort of remind people what we're talking about? And then at some point, you um, move away from these elements in the paintings in the hopes that 
you know, because they're a very potent signifier. Mm -hmm. And so at some point, do you see your work getting to the point where you don't want to see those even in your own work because it's, it's, it's a reminding signifier of this system yeah. as opposed to sort of, you know, not to think about utopia or, mm. or something more idyllic state, yeah. but to try and get people <clears throat> away from that imagery. Yeah. I think that, I think being the person that I am and growing up as a mixed race mm -hmm. black person in America, uh, race is is always I, it's something I wake up to and I it's a lived experience. So race is always I race and racism is at the forefront of my daily existence. Um, I find that many people don't want to talk about it and mm. they think it'll go away if we don't talk about it. And so I think as an artist engaged. Um, and I think I'm, as someone who's very much aware of race and racism and identity politics and identity, you know, I think it's healthy and it's a better situation for us to talk about it and to be honest and have honest conversations mm -hmm. often and frequent. So I think my work is doing the kind of work I want it to do if it sparks conversation. And so I think, I don't, like I said, I don't think I have any answers per se, but mm -hmm. I think if, okay. if people come to my work and it, it sparks a conversation around race and identity, I think that's when my work is doing its, its job. job, yeah, okay. and, and that's what I hope for it, so. All right, yeah. good. So this is a, another painting um, in the series, and the title of this one, uh, People Are Trapped in History, and History is Trapped in Them, mm -hmm. which is, you've already touched on, yeah. and, and that's a recurring theme, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, so there's a, a different figure in here, right. another signifier. Right. Um, but I think I've only seen this doll once in any of mm -hmm. all of these. But, uh, but anyway, why don't you talk then about this one, if there's anything sort of different than the story we've talked about, or if it's just a you know, continuance of the yeah. theme with a, a different, another um, the different the signifier. Doll. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, and so, and that's a James Baldwin quote. And so, a lot, and and so, a lot of the titles of these paintings come from books or uh, okay. mm -hmm. are little snippets out of these speeches that I was reading. Mm -hmm. And so, um, this idea of history is trapped in us. You know, you know, history is in people, and people are trapped in history, or whatever the the, mm -hmm. the title is. Um, and so, again, it's yeah, it's this idea of this this figure, this kind of this Aunt Jemima or Mammy figure, which is just another kind of stereotype um, that gets perpetuated over and over again, uh, like the Sambo. Um, and so I think f for me, uh, it's, it's a different, different symbol, but it's, it's the same thing. It's just a different, um, mm -hmm. you know, the Mammy is, it has a little bit of a different history than the Sambo, but it comes from the same kind of nugget of truth, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, historically. And, and so this is, it's me holding this doll and, um, and, and smile, you know, I think the smiles um, kind of play off one another. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's more of the same. So I think just a different, you know, yeah. a little bit of a different composition, a little bit of a different doll, um, and me kind of playing uh, this role in this, in this narrative. Um, so yeah. Very good. So we're standing in front of uh, this painting uh, entitled, I've got the George Zimmerman Blues slash Jazz Hands. Mm -hmm. um, this one has definitely <laughs> gotten a, a lot of social media hits and mm -hmm. a lot of uh, questions and, yeah. and interest. And so um, I think people know immediately what we're talking about when we say George Zimmerman. Yeah. But, uh, so go ahead and, and talk about this because it's, it's a very strong painting. Yeah. And, um, it's extremely well painted too. I, I love the the way we've never really talked about any of your painting technique, yeah. which is uh, yeah. for a painting show. And uh, this is actually a good one to come back to, perhaps, sure. because um, you, you've uh, really done some amazing things on the face. Well, thank you. And you know, and as I mentioned before, um, you know, I don't. There's a. I think historically with my work, and we talked about this a little earlier, is that I, I usually am reading and I'm planning and then I make the paintings and there's always a little bit of intuition, always. This particular body of work 
uh, intuition led. And so there's also, you know, there's this element of play and this element of, well, here's this idea, let me just see what happens. And so this was an image in my mind uh, that I was like, let me just do, I have to do this image. Um, and clearly, and again, I'm making this work amidst, you know, um, you know, all these shootings that are happening. So, you know, there's Mike Brown and Trayvon Martin and the, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on. And so, so this is me and, and, and so for me, what this is kind of hearkening is I have the hood, um, which Trayvon Martin was, was shot. He was wearing a hoodie that became a symbol, something that got talked about quite a bit. And then in this particular image, I'm now in, in this kind of blackface kind of minstrelsy, um, you know, pose. And so, it's again it's this kind of collision of and i and there's a little bit of dark i find these things to be humorous so there's a little bit of humor and and sarcasm in some of this work as well which is in all of my work but um so now it's this kind of um it's these kind of jazz hands and again it's this smiling face it's this kind of happy pose but it's the it's this negative stereotype of a black body, uh, which allows violence to be done to the to the object, right? And so, um, and so now, you know, I am I am summoning, um, you know, I become the the object that violence gets done to, essentially. So, um, but I think that's actually an important point too, though, with um, the blackface, because that's also come up a lot lately yeah. in entertainment and things and in the news. And people don't understand why it's so offensive. But what you um, just touched on, mm. I think, is really key. By, make, by painting the face mm -hmm. black and using very dark mm -hmm. and, and the, the lips and everything and... Yeah being very much similar. What it does is it takes away any uniqueness individuality about a person. Mm -hmm. So you're not thinking about the person, the black person as a person, as, right. a, as a unique individual. What you're thinking of them is, is as a symbol then. Right. It just reduces, as you said, everybody to this objective uh, sort of, I mean, just is this object and, and just a symbol. It makes it easier then for people yeah. to do harm because you're not seeing the person as a person yeah or as their own person well and, and and the statistics bear this out i mean you look at you look at statistics across any any um example healthcare, you know mm -hmm. um housing wages violence you know and, and what you'll find is that you know african americans while a minority in america you know they make up you know they have the you know, the highest percentage of, of poverty per capita mm -hmm. and, you know, drop, you know, um, violence is, is higher per capita, incarceration rates are higher per capita. And so, and so just kind of the list goes on and right. on and on and on. And wages are lower. Uh, wages are lower. Right. And so, you know, and again, and, and, and so this then harkens to, as I mentioned before, a, a systemic problem mm -hmm. in American culture, right? And so, and the fact that we have someone like Trayvon Martin, a Tamir Rice, you know, these kids, you know, wh right. that are that are being murdered, and and then there's no justice, you know. I think, again, talks about a system where blackness and black bodies have less value, and um, and so that's what you know. That's for me is what all of this is ev evoking. And so, um, yeah, and I've got the George Zimmerman blues, you know, and it, and it, so it's almost yeah. like a sh it becomes entertainment even, you know, it becomes a, it becomes a show, it becomes a minstrel show that plays out. Um, and it's, and it's the blues. It gives me the blues. Oh, yeah, and definitely, so, definitely. So we're in front of a, another painting, a simple title, Birmingham, 1963. And I think all of us who are my age for sure, know what that means. And uh, it's a very strong uh, reference yeah. to all of us. But this is a little bit different imagery. It's again, it's you. Um, but there's a couple of interesting elements in here. Um, obviously, this is with the fire hosing and, and crowd control and what have you that's sort of representing what was happening 
during many of the, the race riots mm -hmm. at the time. But there's some interesting features with the bib, the pacifier. Mm -hmm. Um, and the pacifier is sort of a recurring tool mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'd like for you to talk about that because I, I have a, a thought about it, yeah. but I'm curious what you were thinking, especially when I see this whole ensemble. Yeah, and so, so for me, this initially started off as, a, as this crazy, like, huh, me in a diaper and a, and a, and a binky, like, oh, that would be weird. I have a beard and, a, and I put on a diaper and a bib and it's, it's this kind of strange image. And so as I was painting this image, you know, I was thinking about how uh, black males in particular have been emasculated. Um, and I'm thinking about this, uh, this kind of phrase like, hey boy, you know, and especially when it comes to with police and blackness and incarceration and how, and kind of losing rights and losing the ability to uh, take care of yourself. And so all of that gets wrapped up in this for me. Um, and, and one thing I didn't mention is that all of my work s starts as a, as a performance. And so I do some kind of performance, some kind of performative act, either in public or in my studio. I take lots of images and document it, and then I, I'm making the paintings from these, doc, these, these photos. So there's a mm -hmm. couple, my paintings are a couple steps removed from the, the act of the performance. And so this was, I was actually, I was working with this imagery that's in this room, but I was teaching a workshop at Penland, which is a, um, it's Penland School of Craft, it's mm -hmm. in North Carolina. I was teaching a painting workshop there. And so um, this was one of my students, and I did this performance where I was, he was hitting me with a hose in the face, and, um, and I had the goggles on, and I had a kind of a cape, like a superhero. Um, and so afterwards, uh, we were kind of, de we were talking about it, and, and the students had all watched the performance, and, and the guy that was spraying me, and, er and all, at least the white students were really uncomfortable, like, <laughs> with, with the whole thing, and the guy that was, was in, and every, everyone was like, yeah, you know, it, re it reminded me of um, kind of like civil rights, the civil rights right. movement, like, um, it, and the guy was like, you know, I just felt uncomfortable spraying you in the face. It was as if I was um, trying to keep you, keep you back or, you know, and so there was all these yeah. kind of like, so it was an interesting uh, performance in that it, it evoked all these emotions and specifically racial emotions uh, mm -hmm. with, with yeah. the students and myself. And so that was pretty interesting. And so, and so yeah, I, I had made, the, I did the performance, mm -hmm. I had the imagery, I started making the painting and, and then I was like, well, let me look at some of these, these images from the civil rights movement where it's people are getting hosed. And so I ended up settling on that title and kind of yeah. um, hearkening back to that, that, that moment in history, so. Because one of the things that I thought, and, and the reason why I asked you about specifically for this painting is because in other of your paintings, um, what, it, uh, what, what I immediately took from it was sort of a, a pacification mm -hmm. that um, things that, uh, as you were talking about, you know, white liberals trying to help and, and what have you, it's on an individual basis, mm. it helps, but it doesn't change the system yeah. because you need much broader engagement and buy-in yeah. and yet in a total attitudinal shift yeah. uh, to eradicate and just sort of you know, get back to normal. But because uh, there's another one over here where we, uh, with the pacifier and it's called the more things change, the more they stay the same. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was thinking about is it was mm -hmm. some of the things that happen within a particular city, under a particular mayor, or under a particular governor, mm -hmm. or whatever, um, if it isn't system-wide, um, it doesn't really change anything, right. and it's sort of a, the intent is well-meant, but it's a bit more of just a pacification, because it, yeah. it doesn't really change things. It maybe simmers things down yeah. a bit, sure. you know, and so, um, that's what I, I what I took away when I saw that title and that image with mm -hmm. the pacifier, mm -hmm. and but then this you know makes now more sense mm -hmm. the way you described mm -hmm. it because this is it's such a totally different context. Yeah. So, um, but I think they both are um, 
the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. human interpretations. Sure. And as you've said, you've always been open to and, and intrigued by how people interpret the work. When, you know, which, when you put it out there, and your work, uh, by and large, is pretty reductive. This one probably has more stage setting than any yeah. of the others. Sure. Most of them, um, it's you as an isolated mm -hmm. figure. Right. And, um, and with this really no prop or anything yeah. at all. So there's other than the, the doll. But yeah. again, it's, it's almost like another figure. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like there's no stage or anything. It's mm -hmm. not really clear what's happening. Mm -hmm. So, and this kind of ties into, which I think we'll get to the last, one of the last paintings we're going to talk about mm -hmm. today, um, is your brushwork. Mm -hmm. You rely very heavily on your brushwork. Mm -hmm. And um, your work is not you know, photoreal. But instead, I think um, it's very gestural, mm -hmm. it seems, uh, because what you're really trying to convey, and at least when I look at your work, what I see is you very um, aptly convey sort of this anger mm -hmm. or emotion mm -hmm. or you know, frustration. Sure. Um, and so it comes through very clearly in the mm -hmm. facial expressions, the yeah. deep lines and, you know, and furrowed yeah. brows. And, yeah. and there's just that sort of, you know, the, the way you capture the eyes. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a, a soulfulness that comes out in your painting because mm -hmm. you focus very heavily on the stroke, yeah. and um, and 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 um, and it's very gestural, yeah. very, uh, very very you know not not to be picture perfect, mm -hmm. but really to capture the essence yeah. of what's happening. Yeah. And uh, so it's it's this one, like I said, it's a little bit different on a, l a lot of levels that mm -hmm. I wanted to point out. But I think we'll show the the brushwork in this one painting of your face mm -hmm. um, at, at the end. Okay. Yeah. So we're standing in front of with liberty, justice. Uh, I'm sorry, with liberty and justice for all, um, which has a, a, two things we had talked about before um, that we wanted to touch on. One is um, the, the figure is is back in the Sambo doll, but again, now we're we're back with a mask, and there are several of these that have masks. Mm -hmm. And so um, this one, though, as we were talking earlier. Um, has a very interesting connotation, as well as the title. Mm -hmm. So the two go hand in hand. So yeah. I'd like for you to kind of talk about this one sure. um, in particular. Yeah, and so for me, this one is, you know, it's this eagle mask. And, and again, I, I find all of these to be quite playful. And, and as I mentioned, there is a bit of play and, um, you know, fun happening in my studio while I'm making these. But for me, this eagle mask, it, it harkens, and the stance, it's this very kind of patriotic, um, and the title is coming from the Pledge of Allegiance. So there's, there's this, kind of, uh, this kind of patriotism and, and the American eagle, which um, has all of those metaphors and symbology and meaning mm -hmm. wrapped up in that. And so for me, it's, it's this, and you know, and, and same thing with the flag, you know, the flag has, has all of, uh, you know, in some of these paintings, there's the flag, yeah. and, and the, the flag is a loaded image that comes with all of those, those things about America and freedom and justice for all. And, and, so, and so I counter, I, I counter that with this Sambo image, which again is, is also a loaded image uh, in terms of historically. And so this is a, um, a racist, image of a black person, right? It's a, it's a racist image of a, of a black body. So you have this idea of patriotism and justice for all, and then clearly um, that's not the case. So it's, it's the kind of the collision of, of the ideals and the, and the you know, the, the slogans of America. Um, colliding with the reality on the ground, the on-ground on reality that there, there isn't justice happening and there, there's lots of inequality, lots of injustice. Um, and so who, you know, who, who is it for? You know, who is, who is the justice for? Who is, what is patriotism for? Who is it talking to? What does a, a, an American look like? You know, especially with all of these things happening with immigrants now in the country, like mm -hmm. so that you can start to add all of that to the equation. Now this is, again, it's a self-portrait, um, but I'm behind a mask and my skin is very light, so this could be a white person holding this black doll. It, it, 
it's me holding the black doll, so it, it implicates me in the equation. And so there's all of that kind of swirling around. And again, I, there's no right answers. There's no right or wrong answers. It's just me kind of thinking and painting, so. Mm -hmm. Very good. In terms of painting technique, though, too, I happen to notice mm -hmm. um, the, um, you've outlined, mm -hmm. <laughs> just, as, just kind of mm -hmm. talking about painting, um, that's kind of interesting is normally these britches aren't outlined. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. I thought that was kind of interesting. I just happened to notice it. Yeah. Um, it's sort of a Wayne Tebow, uh, mm -hmm. you know, technique of, sure. of outlining everything. But didn't know if it, just from a painting perspective, if there was something. Oh, no, that, you, that it's probably just was, I probably should have painted on it some more before I, <laughs> before I, before I sent it. <laughs> Don't worry about that. No, I just haven't noticed that I was looking at it. It's just sort yeah. of outline. Yeah. There's none of the other ones. Yeah. I, well, maybe some of the others are wrong. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, just sort of a quirk. Yeah. So this might be the last one we'll talk about today. There's a couple of interesting things in this one um, that are definitely noteworthy. Uh, in particular, uh, starting with the title, um, there is not a nation on earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody. Mm -hmm. Pretty loaded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so, and you and I have talked about this one a lot from a whole lot of reasons, mm -hmm. um, both in terms of your painting technique and style mm -hmm. and what have you. So, um, Obviously, this is one of the few where there is a bit of a prop, and mm -hmm. so you see these legs coming in from mm -hmm. the top. Yeah, it's pretty obvious from the title why they're uh, dangling. And mm -hmm. um, but anyway, you've also introduced uh, a different sort of palette for the background mm -hmm. and a different element. Mm -hmm. So um, this one has a, a lot of different things happening. So go ahead yeah. and um, and talk about this. Yeah, first. you know, and that title comes from. Uh, that's a, a Frederick Douglass speech, I believe, and maybe a W. Du Bois speech, but that's definitely a, a title that comes out of one of those speeches I was reading mm -hmm. about. Um, and, and so then, you know, in terms of the background, it's a neutral background, and, and in terms of painting, it allows the figure to kind of come forward in space. Um, I did create this line to kind of create maybe a, a corner of a room or create some space or atmosphere. Um, there's a painting that is not in the show uh, that I had painted right around this time, and it's and it's again it's me holding this black doll, and and it's really just my arm and the doll, and it's called Mike Brown's body, and it's as, it's as almost as if the the doll's being lynched is what it is what it reminds me of, and so the bottom of these dolls comes from that image, and it's as if they they are lynched. And then this also remind for me, this is also could be a rope or a kind of references, kind of a metaphoric lynching. And, and so I think, again, those in that, that the title and especially the, the content of that speech I was reading was really about violence in America towards black bodies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these things I was reading. Um, you know, these are speeches that are 100 years old, you know, 60 years old, 50 years old. And the, it's as if those speeches could be given now, like they're, they're relevant today, right. which I found really interesting. Hence the name, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Exactly. Which again alludes to the systemic issue mm -hmm. of race and racism and, and its pervasiveness. It's, it's, really, um, it's really kind of locked in our culture and it's really hard to get rid of. And so uh, we, you know, we see these kinds of um, systemic things happening over and over and over and over again throughout history. But, you know, so this is, you know, and, and again, for me, a lot of these police shootings and a lot of this violence that's been happening are kind of like lynchings, you know, of, mm -hmm. of black bodies. And so, so for me, this one is kind of um, hearkening to that. And you can see the expression on the faces is, is not one. It's, it's maybe a little more contemplative, a little more serious, a little more um, concerned. Um, and so... Yeah, the um, the face is definitely very stoic. Mm -hmm. Just there's, it's almost completely void of emotion, yeah. and um, and it's and then the eyes are also one of the few times where the eyes are you know so prevalent yeah. um, in the painting. 
So yeah, the, the technique is incredible. I just, uh, and especially when you see the show and you see all the other works, I mean, this one totally stands out yeah. and it should, yeah. you know, I think it's probably one of the more uh, potent pieces mm -hmm. in, in the exhibition. Um, and it is treated just a tad different. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, uh, well, it gets back to two, what we were talking about earlier about these icon or not these, um, th these symbols mm -hmm. and when you were talking, it reminded me, uh, you know, we're going through this phase right now where over the last couple of years, it's been a big debate over eradicating the, uh, um, the Confederate uh, yeah. statues and, and reminders of mm -hmm. that sure. and sort of celebrations, which statues typically are yeah. considered, a, you know, um, acknowledgement or celebration. And so, um, but it's also, it's stemmed a huge debate mm -hmm. Um, you know, but that's why um, I was asking you sort of if you've even thought now about um, if you think about your work, because your work is a trajectory of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, so for people um, to look kind of online, uh, you'll see uh, Michael always works in um, discrete bodies of work mm -hmm. that have a very distinct um, aesthetic about them mm -hmm. that, that unifies them. And um, and, um, and most of your work, there is action, emotion. It's capturing, as you say, some mm -hmm. sort of a performance mm -hmm. or, or piece. Even the one where you did with the uh, other artists, uh, there were the two of you. Uh, that was quite a while ago. But you know, all of your work uh, has this sort of defining characteristic about mm -hmm. it, and you work in these discrete bodies. Mm -hmm. so that's why I just am thinking, um, you know, where you sort of see yourself going, and maybe it's too soon because you're not mm. really completely done with this, yeah. but you're, you're pretty much wrapping it up, and yeah. you've explored a lot of different paths in here. But that's where I'm wondering if, um, does out of your own work, mm -hmm. sort of uh, just stepping away from the, the symbols that are potent reminders, becomes something <laughs> that, you know, becomes a defining moment in your mm -hmm. own work, or are they still a necessary tool, do you think, um, in, in your the discourse you're trying to create? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's, it, it kind of, things kind of ebb and flow. I think, um, you know, this kind of blackface minstrelsy, the Sambo imagery is something that I've kind of, that's kind of come and gone in my work. Um, the, it's, what's interesting is, you know, the, the American flag shows up in a couple of pieces, mm -hmm. and I, I, that is a, is a symbol or a, a tool that I've, used in some in a long time ago in some early work and so it's interesting how things kind of come back into the work and leave and so i think um yeah i mean I, I try to be as honest and authentic in the space that i am at the at the appropriate time and and so i think you know some of the stuff will kind of come and go and and if it will always be there i don't i don't know maybe it'll go mm -hmm. away forever but um but yeah, it's interesting how symbols kind of come and go in my work uh, over the years, you know, so, uh, and how I, how I come back to certain things or leave certain things out. And so, um, so we'll see. Yeah, I don't have the answer 100% to that yet, but. No, I know, see. it's, it's yeah. always an evolution. Yeah. And, and again, this work, even some of what's in here as we talked about, um, you know, you started this series three or four years ago mm -hmm. But it, it definitely, um, you ramped up on certain things, yeah. you know, partly out of what's just been happening in uh, our culture mm -hmm. and in the news. Sure. You know, so your work is clearly very responsive with current events and yeah. sentiment and, yeah. and, and uh, you know, emotion and, and uh, frustration. So, yeah. but we'll stay tuned. We'll have All you right. back yeah. uh, to talk about your work in the future. And, um, and, and I just think it's really helpful, though, for people to hear from you yeah. how you know what you're thinking because like I said you operate on a lot of levels mm -hmm. um, both in terms of written word your mm -hmm. titles um, you know you make a lot of strong references mm -hmm. to very important figures and historical moments mm -hmm. um, and then so much of it though is so personal especially with you being the yeah. subject sure. you know putting yourself sort of you know on center stage yeah. and um, so we appreciate it mm -hmm. thanks